We're going to be looking at the Spirit, uh, and so I'm going to do my best to try and unpack some of this, but also I, I'm believing for uh, that, that there's a sense of the Holy Spirit as we continue this empowered series. Uh, and, you know, as sons and daughters of God, as Christians, we're, I so, uh, there's, there's no way uh, that you can hear us. And uh, I was thinking about this, Romans 1 says this, it's the gospel of God. And so what we've sung about uh, is a supernatural help of the Holy Spirit, we start to live out these beautiful truths. And so if you turn to Romans 14, really interesting passage actually, uh, they wear a face mask, why aren't they wearing the face mask? Why are they sitting so close to me? Why haven't we opened the church yet? Why are we not to, oh, do you remember all of those debates? Do you remember, no, no one else had that, that was just my world, you know, uh, and are we a vaccine guy? I don't know, I don't know, so I just preached Romans 14 on the video and hid in my shed, uh, and, uh, but, but this was kind of, that's interesting, isn't it, judgment is for, uh, you perhaps weren't in their shoes or had the same situation as theirs, instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food, God says that all food's clean, and really what he's meaning is the gospel's not just for Jews, it's for Gentiles. But of course, there's a journey that they're working out uh, from, from that kind of history. In other words, he's saying this, that, look, even though that's not sin to eat that food, if someone's conscience doesn't allow them to, and that is that their conscience doesn't allow, don't, don't force them to do it, or don't do destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do it. Because that's going to, going to cause them to stumble, and their conscience isn't as strong as yours. Do not allow what you come of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So he's saying this. He's saying, look, it's all this stuff about food and what you can eat and what you can drink and what you can't drink and what you can sin. That's the issue. The best example I can think of is alcohol, because the Bible says don't get drunk on alcohol. It doesn't say don't drink alcohol. But the principle is... Don't drink al alcohol in front of someone or with someone. Matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so he's saying, look, don't get distracted by the minutia. And not only those three things, but in the Holy Spirit, which we'll get to. So he's saying that there are bigger things than arguing over whether you can eat pork or whether you can eat this, this, this meat that's been sacrificed to idols and all this stuff. You by men. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace. To mutual edification. Interesting, isn't it? That there's a piece that we'll get to. Is all food is clean, but it is wrong for whatever you believe about these things. Keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself for what he approves, but the man who has doubts is condemned if, if he eats, because his eating is not from faith. In other words, he's saying, others say something is free, and you don't feel free to do it. Don't cross your conscience, because then it's not done with faith, and anything not done with passage to you, this beautiful piece of scripture. And we say, let it be men. And so Paul's dealing with this principle. He's saying, don't fight, don't fight over the mosquito and miss the camel. That's kind of the print in shed life. And the history, I'm trying to unpack this because it's a different sermon. Care of those who are more vulnerable in the family and do what serves them so that they are served rather than just do what you want and flaunt things does. Don't, don't judge. And then right in the middle of this pastoral advice, Paul then really begins to talk about the kingdom of God, which, which is this, that there's this, this king, let's talk about this a lot, for the kingdom of God. Uh, and really important to notice that, that the kingdom is, is not a realm, it's a rule. Really important distinction. So the kingdom of God is not a, a realm, like we understand, a king, a king has a realm. We're, we're saying, no, that this, this kingdom is the rule of God. And so what happened in David's testimony when he's in heaven, came to earth, invaded his body, healed his heart, uh, and it's been demonstrated as a healing, as it's through rule has come. And so Paul's saying that there's a kingdom expressed. That's another way. Jesus spoke of a kingdom. He is speaking of a rule over people's lives. That's why the gospel is so confrontational, because Jesus comes and he says, you're not the ruler of your life. I'm going to be the ruler. And have you ever kicked against that? I know I have and continue to, where Jesus says, one thing I'd say, I'd rather be in the drivers is the desire of the nation, says that in Haggai. In fact, the Bible says uh, that he was full of joy when the disciples returned uh, from their mission trip, uh, in the full of righteous, he is a, he is a king of peace. Their realm becomes that thing. And so that is, that is really some of what I think is in Paul's background here, what he's thinking. And being around Jesus, you find those things, righteousness, peace, and joy. Now... 
as we look at this, it's interesting because the thing that God gives, but you could also read it, and I think part of it is if I could put it this way, there's a, there's a right, there's a kingdom with a rule of from a king gave our lives to Jesus. Anyone given their lives to Jesus? You could say a, a working and a subjectivity to it where rightly, uh, it, I believe in Christianity, through the Holy Spirit, we're to understand and experience in our life that then outwork horizontally to the world around us. Does that make any sense? To, and I think that's some of what Paul is saying here. And so objectively, and I'm not going to take long over this because I haven't got long. Uh, I would love to take a whole series over this. But I believe this, that do you know they've received the gift of righteousness? Yes, we have to get much more Pentecostal in this church. More they help. You know, your Pentecostal background now is going. <laughs> it, yeah, hallelujahs and amens are a real welcome. So, so we know we can buy our, our righteousness, we can educate our way there, we can buy sin for us so that in him we might become the right. It's a gift to us. Uh, and the, the theologians would call it an imputed righteousness. There's, a, there's an imputed righteousness. John Piper, he, he says this. I can imagine him saying this, but I'll, I'll read it because I think it's powerful. He says, I linger over the issue of the imputed righteousness of God in Christ because when I held and have you redeemed your righteousness, your righteousness is in heaven. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't get better when your faith is strong. It doesn't get worse when your faith is weak. It's perfect. It's, it is Christ. Look away from yourself. Rest in him, lean on him. Buy it, find it. We've got some, I'm sure, not achievers. Uh, and so that, that, that kind of helps me. We're receivers, not achievers. Uh, and so the Bible says it this way. It's by grace you've been. Where do you find yourself? You've fallen over. Where? In the kingdom of God. You are saved. You are righteous. You're free from accusation. You're without blemish. Everyone who loves Jesus in this room, you've given your life to Jesus here or at home or wherever you're watching this, is, is radically saved. There's no such thing as a radical testimony. It's like saying hot fire. <laughs> it's like, it's, I just found it, thank you, Jeff Murray. I just incredibly moved, actually, as we, as we walked through that moment. And, and at one level, you think, I, I don't want to be confronted with that level of, of pain and destruction. And it's, it, it, it's ugly. And its it rule is righteousness and peace. And it's a peace that, that is a, a peace that comes from heaven. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's what Romans 5 says. There's a peace that is, that is given. Use words like propitiation. <laughs> words, it's not just mercy. It's, it's a from you and placed on Jesus. That the fathers, that the, the wrath of God, the dealing with sin and the, the, all the brokenness of that was, was dealt with. The result is you, you are no longer in from God is reached. It, it's, it's crazy. Righteousness, peace, peace based on forgiveness. And then there's this joy. Salvation is your biggest story. It's bigger than your career. It's bigger than your income. It's bigger than your successes. <laughs> your biggest story is that Jesus saved you. Moment, we're talking about a joy that goes deeper in our same said. And yet, as I said, there's this this is a drinking and judge, uh, but that somehow you can enter into. That somehow you talks about H2O, and you can you can understand the science behind it and the temperature, and you and but until you get in that pool, you don't benefit it's your reality. And some of you are like, oh, it's not about feelings, Duncan. Well, I'm sorry, Christianity is partly about feelings. It is about emotion. It is about reality, and we're to live that out. In fact, first fruits of the spirit. It's this, We've, got the, we've, we've experienced something of it, but don't you groan for more? Has anyone groan for more? And so there's this, we, we've tasted something of the future kingdom, but there's a fullness to come, but with a nowness. There's a fullness in redemption, but there's a nowness of the kingdom that we can experience. Notice he didn't say anyone who got up in a, early and prayed. He didn't say that. He didn't say our hunger and thirst for the things of God. Psalm 42, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my, pa my soul pants for you, O God. You know, the kingdom's upside down. In, in the world, the more you eat, the fuller you get. In the kingdom, the more you eat and drink of the things of God, the hunger feeds you and you. God is a billionaire in the desert 
with their debit card, I promise you I know what they're thinking about. They're not thinking about their Rolex or their... We've got to get to that place. Uh, You don't just want water. You need it in the desert. You don't just want Jesus in this life. We need him. Amen? And that's why I think Paul's saying, in the Holy Spirit, this, this horizontal outworking of the gospel. We've received vertically heaven to earth the gospel as we've received Jesus and now we're God but it's also living in such a way that brings a climate change to where we are does that make sense so so there's a right say it like this there's a righteousness is a free righteousness the right standing responsibility put it this way righteousness is both given and pursued Jesus said it didn't he he said seek first the kingdom and my righteousness he he, he said that And we need the help of the Holy Spirit because I don't know if you've noticed, sin really sparkles before you've done it. (laughs) Just being honest. You know, that moment where you get to gossip seems like such a good thing to be able to do. And then you think, ah, or or to look at that thing on the TV or to do that or to. And so there's this in the heart righteous choices because sin sparkles. And let me put this even more poignantly sin. Sin is always a bomb and never a bullet. Because what, what I mean by that is you think your private sin, your personal sin, your sin behind closed doors, the things that you're doing that you think no one knows about has a corporate impact at the moment where leaders have got to a point, position, then pulls the plug on it, and guess what? Thousands of people are impacted. I'm not, I am not judging in that. What it makes me do is think, I need to be very careful. I need to be very a bomb. And so is yours. Spirit's not heavy things like, as a righteous kingdom, his rule is of righteousness, his imputed righteousness to you. Now you're going to express righteousness. How? Help me, Holy Spirit, because this world is broken and everywhere I look is a problem. Everywhere I look, there's an opportunity to sin and the enemy's tempting and driving and there's my flesh and all of that stuff. And I'm living in a world that's, that's pulling me in certain directions. Holy Spirit, help her. It's peace and joy. In the Holy Spirit, break-ins, uh, breakthroughs of God. But we also need a church that is pure and spotless and righteous and living righteously. And people look in and say, oh, that's got integrity. That's got, that. they want that. They want authenticity. They look at it and they see leaders and people saying one thing, doing another. And they want a, they want a righteousness on display. Not time to say all of these amazing notes here. Brilliant, Duncan. Well done. Um, <laughs> to be fair, I've said them before. Um, <laughs> unpack this but uh, me and Joe um, sorry we were ill last week and, and weren't here but we we, we had ch- chance to catch up um, on some Netflix which has been good uh, and one of the series we watched is um, uh, is Robbie Williams documentary I don't know if anyone's seen that Robbie Williams remember he was in Take he's, I think he's an iconic example technically my age and the, the documentary is him, him watching footage thousands of hours behind the scenes footage is what was broken in me this was this is what, what happened in me. And people are looking for peace in all sorts of places. And we've got to God. Because what Jesus doesn't prop with it. And so true, true peace is not the absence of trouble. True peace is not when you get all the answers. True peace, I increasingly would encourage us as strongly as I can. True peace is raw Christianity that says... I'm getting to know good, that, that he's my ever-present help in trouble. With, with him, nothing's impossible. It feels like it can't be the case for me. Uh, and then in the Holy Spirit, we come to a place where we say, Lord, these objective truths of the gospel, please, I, please can I feel them? <laughs> please can I know them in my heart as I wrestle in prayer and as I fight for certain things that I want to see breakthrough in? The Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit that I might feel it. Jesus himself said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Bill Johnson calls this peace of God by the Spirit of Jesus. And you, and you fight for that stuff sometimes. It doesn't come automatically. It comes by marinating. It comes by waiting on God. It comes through prayer. Dare I say fasting. Coming, drawing alongside the Lord, shutting the door and saying, Lord, I'm here again. I don't know if I want to be. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to hear you, but I'm here again. And I say, Lord, in the whole righteous mystery. In the, anyone there yet on that one? Blessings. All understanding will guard your heart as understanding. Tough, and it doesn't. Equals whatever he says it equals. And, and, and that's kind of it, isn't it? 
Uh, and so we, 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 we say, God, give me that peace. It's not a reasonable peace not to be anxious. In fact, this verse, and so guard my thoughts, guard my heart like a soldier guards a, th- a fortress. It's all good stuff. Joy, righteousness, there's currents to calmness at greater depths. And that's really what the gospel is. It's, it's like all this chaos that you can see around you, and yet underneath there's things that are really unmoving, or they move consistently in a way that is not unordered and chaos. Or I could put it this another way, there's, there's weighing scales, and there's the scale of the challenge, and you think, ah, oh, that's the reality. And so that's why in places like 1 Peter, you can read about, is, uh, Peter says things like, rejoice in the midst of trial. Or, or James, sorry. And, and this thing of joy is that Jesus meets Elizabeth pregnant. pregnant. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's coming to get Jesus. When Jesus is close, there's joy. And it, it's, it's supernatural. It's a joy that we can receive with fresh revelation. Psalm 6, and people begin to laugh. Why are they laughing? I've, I literally heard this. That some, some, a woman was like that, and she laughed, and she laughed, and she laughed, and she laughed, until she laughed herself to, to, to health because she had a tumor in her neck, and it went. As she, it, Jesus said, water from the wells of salvation. Some of us may have felt, I've lost that joy. Well, there's a psalm for you. It says this, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Just the, just the Bible is full of this kind of thing called joy, uh, and in fact, laughter is a spiritual weapon. What is Jesus doing in heaven? Laughing. Psalm one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. What does Jesus do? The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. In other words, that we receive from heaven the one who is overflowing with joy, the Bible says, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, and gave his joy to you. And in the Holy Spirit, that you now can walk into an experience of those things and experience them for yourselves in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the challenge, just to your left and your right here, and then carry Amen? Well, let's stand together, shall we? I wonder if we can get the band back up here. I just want to pray for us. Keep free in a moment to, to move uh, as uh, of righteousness, peace and joy. So if, if, if particularly one of those things stands out for you, I want you to move somewhere in the room. I uh, just like movement. So you come to the front. You say, I want to know what it is. I want to know the fresh revelation and experience. Of- uh, so one of you are going to move first. So Dave, are you gonna, you've, you moved already, haven't you? About this. I'm hunger and thirsting for the Lord. Uh, I'm not going to be in a desert hoping my debit card sorts it out. I'm coming to the Lord. He's a God who can ex- we can experience. And so, Lord, I want to pray for the joy of the Lord is through to the peace. Peace is that thing you need. And the Lord says, are you just reminding me just that, just he reminds you of the storm that he muzzled. The Bible says he muzzled the peace. It's like a balm. It's like you switch off your intellect. You switch off your, your own capabilities and you receive peace right now. It's a peace that transcends all understanding. And righteous, righteous. Now he says, forget yourself and remember him. sense. Can't educate before, impress your way. It's a righteousness that you receive that will release these other things. And then the person driving that train in the and I saw people standing there with so much luggage that as trains were going through they couldn't get on the tra- driving the train. And I feel him to leave that luggage on the platform because the train is coming and Jesus is driving the engine. He's taking us, he's taking us on an adventure and the train is coming and he's calling you to leave it all behind and get on the train with him because that's where... So what what we're going to do is we're going to rose. Just keep receiving the worship. If you you need need to collect your kids, it's 12 for those who've got kids. However... Bring them back in the room, uh, and then I'm sure we can get you prayed for as well. So let you let you get your kid out. Jesus, enthroned upon the praises of our hearts.
This is one of those moments where you just don't know how to Let's keep receiving. If you want prayer, and Joe's got a word in just a moment to share as part of that, then, then I, I want to encourage you just not to set free. I was reminded, fallen in so many battles, that they fell so that we would have the freedom to be in the room today. And, and I just want to urge you, as I close, we're not going to finish, remember, but as I close, I want to read this scripture from Colossians because I want to ask you to come this evening at six o'clock. We're going to have a... There's three holes up there behind me and they're ready for this cross to go up. I want, I, I want us to say how important this is. And I want to read this scripture from Colossians and then I'm going to ask Jo to share her word. You who were dead in your sins by cancelling this is how he makes us righteous he cancelled the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands we were rightly guilty and he cancelled the record of this he set aside that record of debt he set aside by nailing it to the cross that's how significant it is that what we're going to do this evening at that righteousness and I want to deal with the but as I say we're not going to finish Joe would you share your word if this word is for you then I want you to come forward so that you can find that freedom judgment can be is, is changed to love when we are filled with the Holy Spirit you are judgmental which is probably all of us actually but in some ways but if you feel that you are judgmental in ways that is not, un is not healthy, I would love you to come. So you might be coming forward for anything, but we can, that judgmental spirit can go because we are called to be healthy, pure bride of Christ, aren't we? So can I just say, as we, as we could just continue this moment, you might want to go and get coffee, but as, can I just say, be brave. Be brave, come forward, let's get prayer. Whatever that is for, let's be brave and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Play the we will pray for you together. And the Lord bless you this week. We'll see you at six o'clock.